saying, Watsi, we're going to get started here. All right. Um, as far as your family line, how long has your family been here in Dixon? Uh, as far as I know, is that my great grandmother and grandfather arrived here right around 1900. Tony Kilkenny, Anthony Kilkenny, and, and uh, Margaret Kilkenny. They were the parents of seven brothers who all settled close by here or Vallejo. And the, the, primarily they were farmers. The home ranch that they lived on was sitting here in Vacaville. In fact, there's a road out there named Kilkenny Road, which is named after the family. Where did they come from? Obviously, they named like Kilkenny, like. From Ireland, we can trace my grandmother's back to Ireland. We have a hard time tracing my great grandfather, so we always thought maybe he took it was a taken name. But we can't we can't find him back in Ireland. We can find my grandmother. Her name was Watson. We can find her whole family back there, and she even had a sister on her. And now, did most of the family settle over towards uh, Vacaville? You said to that's start. Where, with? That's where the mom and, mom and dad. Then they first settled right around Stockton, and uh, some of them gone back and found some records of uh, uh, some Kilkenny being baptized over there. Then they moved to here. My grandfather, my not my my grandfather, not my great grandfather. They, they farmed here in Dixon. They farmed between here and Winters. And when you went down that road, Stevenson Bridge Road, and you went to Jacks. Mm -hmm. uh, just kept on on uh, Seavers Road. Mm. What kind of crops did they raise up there? Primarily dry land, or dry grain crops. And later on, when my uncle took over, they farmed alfalfa and tomatoes. Did they raise like any cattle or sheep? Sheep. They raised sheep, primarily sheep. Was their big. Did so they? Did Sheep follows a, a in the line of when you're dry farming, you put the sheep on the uh, stubble after it's been harvested, and they, they feed there on some of the barley and stuff that's left over. Now, were they, they were probably Suffolk sheep, right? That's what they were. They were Hamps or Suffolk, yes. Hmm. They're primarily black faced, which is Hamps and Suffolk. Blackface were the better mothers and the, uh, were primarily their, their hands or something. And they were your grandparents, right, that, that yes. lived up there? Now that's north of Dixon, right? Yes, and they didn't they actually lived in Dixon. Oh, they lived in Dixon? If you go down the first street here and across the railroad tracks, their house is on the right there. Big blue house, been there forever. And then how many children did they have? Uh, my grandfather was one of seven brothers. Mm. There were seven brothers. After they settled in Vacaville with the, the great grandparents, the brothers kind of took off and they went to farming around here. And some went to Vallejo, one of them became the city engineer from Vallejo, and another one worked at Mare Island in Vallejo for a year. So the whole family, all seven of them, settled between Dixon and Vallejo. Now, were they all boys? Yes, there were seven boys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would have been rough. <laughs> um, and so, now that was your father that was one of the seven boys? No, my grandfather was one of the seven boys. Oh, your grandfather was one of the seven boys. Yeah. And so did your grandfather stay here in this area? Yeah, he stayed, he lived actually in Dixon and farmed up there between Dixon and Winters. And uh, there used to be a barn between here and Vacaville on Highway, was Highway 40 then. It was a big old red barn, they used to call it the Red Barn, and that was on one of my, of my grandfather's 
upon his brother's piece of property. J.J. Kilkenny. And now what was your father's name? Watsy. <laughs> oh, his name was Watsy too? Yeah. Okay. I never have heard of how it got to be Watsy. Her, her name is John Watson. Because my grandmother's name was Watson. John Watson. How it ever got to Watsy, I don't know. My dad was named Watsy, and I just became King Jr. And I was called that for years by my uncle Jr. Now, did you, your father stay in this area too? Yeah, he had a hardware store, which I inherited. Down in 55, but uh, he had a hardware store downtown, and he was a county recorder back in the 1930s. I'm a county recorder. I'm sure he got all kinds of information. Yes. Knew everybody, I'm sure. Yeah, he did. <laughs> in a position like that, I used to go down to his office, and it was all done on typewriters, and it sounded like a bunch of machine guns going off with gals typing. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the hardware store? Farmers Exchange. That was in just downtown Dixon. Well, actually, it was a uh, uh, West End. It was uh, the corner of. Uh, first of all, it was at 180 West B, and then it was at uh, North Adams and West F. Okay. And then you took it over from him, huh? Yes. And how many brothers and sisters did you have? I have one sister. I guess your dad was seven brothers. That was enough. He wasn't going to have that many. Now, have you lived here in Dixon all your life? I have lived here all my life. I've never left. I was born in Sacramento in 1931, and I have never left the combine. Was, was your, uh, were you or your father in any of the wars, World War I? Or? No, neither one of us. My uncle was and my dad was, and I was. Were, were you here in Dixon? Well, you obviously were here in Dixon then when it snowed. Oh, yes. They had the yes. big snow bag. Yes, yes. One of my uncles got on the keys behind the car. I think that was March of 41, I believe. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't remember there was 30, 41 or 38. I don't know why yeah, 38 yeah. seems yeah. to stick in my yeah. mind. It seems like it was in 38 or yeah. in the 30s, like 30s anyway. In fact, I've got a picture someplace in this house of me at our house on South Broadway. We made a great big snowman roll up the big snow. I, I can actually remember. Yeah. You guys didn't have any problems with any of the flooding or things like that that came through or fires in the area? No. Uh, we've never really had a, we've had the south end of town here, a couple blocks over, that has flooded, but the uh, primary flooded because it couldn't run off fast enough. Mm -hmm. It didn't come in from any place. Couldn't get rid of it. Did Jack ever say anything about the yeah, he said that it, it did flood up there one time, and uh, the the creek hadn't been cleaned out enough, Back and it just got you know backed up and, and and congested. And I guess it flooded a couple of the, to the farmers that were you know close by. He yeah. said they didn't get it too bad, but a couple of farmers had to pick up their sheep and yeah. move them in the house <laughs> and stuff to keep them from drowning. But uh, he. he you guys are far enough, I think, over here away from the Sacramento River yes, and, yes. and the, the, the bypass, and then the water all goes to the east of us through the bypass. Mm. Now, did your father do any farming besides uh, the hardware store? No, he did a little bit. When I was a kid, he farmed some of the places around Dixon. I remember he farmed out there with the Dixon baseball field, the softball field, and how he farmed that. He grew corn, Milo, and uh, I remember that. 
But he was primarily politics with his kind of recorder. Mm. Now, Jack Kilkenny, was that his brother? No, Jack. I think his name was Jack. Which one was the uh, on the the post office? The post Jim. Jim. That was his Jim. brother. That was his brother. Yes. Yeah. Fire chief, and he was a fire chief for a hundred years. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I read somewhere that he was a fire chief for thirty five years. Yeah, the postmaster. Just or, about no, the long postmaster. Long. Yeah, for thirty five years. Just about as long as. as a and seventeen years he was the fire chief. And then the fellow who took over the fire chief was a partner. Of Farmers Exchange, Bill Fairfield. He became the next chief. He was the next chief after Jim. Mm. And now Jim was your father Watsy's brother, right? Right, correct. Okay. Correct. Get all those those boys oh, straight. Right. <laughs> now you said Jack. I had to scratch my brain. I don't think we had a Jack. No, I was trying to remember. I know you're trying to remember. Yeah, the name, which yeah. the which uh, one it was, but. Uh, Well, he was a fire, a fire department for quite some time. I, 17 years is a long time. Yes, he did, <laughs> but at those times, the, uh, the postmaster was a political appointee. Mm -hmm. Jim was a very strong Democrat, so he was appointed by Roosevelt. He just stayed on as long as Roosevelt was around. And then well, now, when Dixon had, a, what was it, their sesquicentennial, or centennial. centennial, yeah. Now he was on the chairman or board yes, or something was. for yeah, that, yeah, wasn't yeah, he? Yes, he was. The chairman of the centennial. It was 1968, I believe. I'm not sure. I don't remember what year it was. What, what did uh, Dixon do for their centennial oh, celebration? We, we got up to a whole bunch of balloons at the fire station down there, and they had little invitations to come to Dixon. We had a parade, and we had the dance and stuff at the fairgrounds. Primarily we just advertised it and we, like the little balloons we offered free gift to the, send the little note to us or send a free gift to get for us. But some of them were found over the other side of Stockton uh, up by uh, Comanche Lake. They all seem to go east from here. Well, the south, yeah. southwest wind blowing the winter. Mm -hmm. Delta breeze is blowing yeah, the mountains. Yeah, it can blow. <laughs> Further south, Dixon, that damn breeze can blow. Well, I know. Well, there's a lot of open air out, you know, yes. open spaces yes. that it can just really come through. Now, back though, it's kind of down in a hole. They don't get the breeze that we get. Mm. We come through Sacramento pretty good yeah. sometimes, too. Did you guys ever uh, do very much with the fair? Did you participate My in the fair much? My dad was one of the... Uh, He was one of, we had racing here one time, horse racing. Mm -hmm. Dad was one of the promoters of that, very much a promoter of that. Did you ever get in there and uh, get your fingers in it too? Oh, well, I, I, they have a, a kind of a committee that uh, called Friends at the Fair, which they do things at the fair time. We sell beer and stuff like that, and we turn the profits back to the, the fair needs something to buy it for. Mm -hmm. The fair board wants this and that, we, we have the money that. Actually, it's a really nice fair. I've been to it before. It's yeah. such a really nice country fair. It's really a nice contribution to the city, that fair. Mm -hmm. It's very well kept up. And yes. It's just, it's still just a... Oh, shoot. I what? forgot to push the button. No. <laughs> Oh. But no, th that fair is just a really nice little fair. I've, I've always really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. very, very nice. I'll have to get you my cousin, Denny. He's got a, a lot more facts on the family than I do. Of course, she's younger than I am. She remembers that. Yeah, it's just. Our memories sometimes aren't what we would like them no. to be. <laughs> Did your family ever take, uh, you know, 
enter different things into the fair, you know, used to contests be, uh, and stuff? The fair used to be a big family affair years, years ago. It used to be a big baseball game and a family affair at night. Uh, my dad and uncle all played baseball for Dixon. Now, did they have, a, a, what, an A-League or something? No, it just it, it, Dixon had a team, Davis had a team, Winters had a team, Vacaville had a team, they all had teams. And every Sunday they'd play, and the, the old ball ground just be down for the fairgrounds. Hmm. Well, now, would they have the horse races? Was it at the fairgrounds or was yes, it somewhere else? Yes, the fairgrounds. There was the track there? Yes, there was a track there. It, actually, then he had motorcycle races there after that. That didn't go over very well because it was noisy. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't like that either. No. Not in my backyard. And that's right kind of in town still. It is. You, you could hear it in every place. You hear it. And uh, well, the actual horse racing is down in the Slano Fair now actually came from Dixon. I mean, that was it. They took it over. Yeah, I think Jack said something about it got kind of politicked out of town yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, did they do betting in the whole yeah, nine yards the whole of the thing, races yeah. here? They had a grandstand, and underneath the grandstand, they had a ticket booth where you wagered your bets. Mm -hmm. And for years, that was the high school where they played their football games. It's it a beautiful spot. They had a nice grandstand and uh, lights, and, and uh, they had a wonderful spot to play football. Mm. Well, they tore the old grandstand down, though, Yes, right? they did. They built some new ones, but they out of cement and iron. These old ones were out of wood. No, it doesn't last quite as long out here yeah. in this either hot and dry or yeah. cold and wet. But they had little boxes out in front that during the football games. Like if you were a member of the quarterback club, you got little boxes to sit in out there. Mm -hmm. nice. Now you must have gone to school here in, yes, in Nixon, I did. right? Yes, I graduated from 1949. Now, is that the old high school that's over there? The high school's still there. Was it on B Street or something? Or it's on... Uh, or A? It's the end of uh, B Street. Hmm. I think the street that, that runs north and south is 4th. I think it's 4th and B. Mm -hmm. Or Dixon Avenue A, Dixon A Street and 4th Street. And uh, that's, that's the high school I graduated from. Then I went to... Grammar school, we tore that down. Now, did um, did your sister? Well, she obviously would have gone to school here she too. Must have graduated here, yes. Did she? Did she went to Sac State, became a nurse. Hmm. Did she stay in this area, or did? No, she's in Placerville now. Hmm. Had to get out of this valley, huh? Yep. <laughs> well, she went to with Sac State and became an LVN, licensed vocational nurse, then she went right back and became an RN. Now, did your mother work or just your father at the hardware store? My dad store? had the store. And about what time period did you take over the store? About 1955 or six or something like that. Now, did did you do a different kind of work from the time you graduated till you went to work at the store? Well, I, the only other work I did, I worked for my father-in-law in Wooden. I had a hell of a job. I picked up dead animals. Oh, that wouldn't have been too. Uh, good <laughs> job. And, uh, and he had a packing house up there, and I worked in the uh, packing house. They called rolling meat and stuff like that. The, the grater come back grated, and you'd roll a grate on it. Mm. Then I worked at the Dixon Auction Yard. My first job out of high school at Dixon Auction Yard. Art Brown owned that. I knew the Brown family. And he gave me a job out there cleaning corrals and stuff. Really hell of a job. <laughs> now, was that very big? Is it still around? Yes, it is. It's, it's 
being sold was you go out of town north of Clear up the North First Street on the right hand side. It was burned down here fifteen years ago. But I shouldn't say down, it was burned up. And uh, they carried on the Shane brothers carried on for a while and then it uh, was sold to some developers. Now, did what kind of did they bring in all different kinds of animals to auction there? Yeah, or primarily sheep. But they did they, every, they had every Wednesday was sale day, and every sale, sale day in the morning they'd sell cattle, in the afternoon they'd sell sheep because the sheep were just numbers. The cattle were Wednesdays and Tuesdays. I mean, were they like in the hundreds of animals or sheep, thousands? Sheep, they or? would bring in hundreds of times. Hmm. I haven't noticed to see how big the auction yard was. I it's uh, if you stop by, you can see the, you can still the rings and stuff are still there. But they still use them. Now the the sheep, did they auction them and take them off to slaughterhouses, or did the people just Prior, buy them for the stock? Or? They used to run a lot of feeders, so that's where the numbers came from. There were lambs that came that weren't fat yet, and there were feeders, and these local farmers would buy them and put them on on the pasture. Now, did they use them mostly for their wool or for food? Food. Hmm. And what about the cattle? Was the cattle pretty much the same? Same way. The cattle the primarily was, uh, everybody had one cow or two cow on his ranch and he'd bring it in to sell it or he'd go in to buy mm -hmm. one. But the volume of numbers was sheep and the volume of dollars was cattle. Hmm. Now, was there here in town uh, a place also where they brought uh, produce and things like that in, and or sorghum or anything like that? They used they to sold? store grain here. Sack grain used to be in sacks. Mm -hmm. They all in the warehouse over here. And then Mojo put it in a big pile, and then they'd issue a warehouse receipt and sell it, the product from there. What about those big silos that are down by the railroad track? Did they that was part of Cargill one time. And they used to put grain in there. Do you know what kind of grains and things that they grew the most out here? I mean, I know they do a lot of tomatoes. And yeah, well, the grain was a, barley primarily. Barley was Now, did they do much sorghum or millet or corn or things like that? Later on, maybe in the last 20 years, they've done a lot of corn. Corn mm -hmm. has become real popular. I know sunflower seems to be, yeah, or safflower seems yeah. to be real popular now. Now, did they haul most of that stuff, including the tomatoes, off somewhere, like to Stockton or something for market? Tomatoes, well, right now, uh, east of Dixon, we have a tomato factory. Mm. They used to go to Woodland and around there, then the, the sugar bees that were harvested, we had a uh, sugar beet dump right at the downtown, not downtown, there, so the, the end of Broadway, and uh, then they have one up east of town. We used to haul them dump the beets, and they dump them on rail cars and haul them away. But now all the tomatoes and stuff are Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems like an awful lot of them go down to Stockton. Yes. Because, like, north of Sacramento and west towards uh, Woodland area, it seems to be just lots of uh, tomato fields that they call yeah. this stuff down there. Of course, there's rice fields and things up yes, there, too. Yes. Now, they didn't raise any rice out this direction, did uh, they? Closer to winters, they did. Mm. Something to do with the climate for warm. I never did farms so on, so I don't know, but I've been there. Yeah. Read area between Winters and uh, Madison. It's quite an area up there of rice. I think they're maybe closer to the Sacramento and Feather River, so they can pump water out easier, too. I don't know. I think they, a lot of them get their water from Clear Lake, hmm. Cash Creek water. 
Yeah. Now, in your hardware store, you obviously had to have everything shipped in. Was yes. about what size of a hardware store was it, and where did you get most of your materials? Most of it came from. We finally joined a, a, a cooperative, uh, True Value. We got all that True Value. We finally settled in Woodward. We got a lot from there, mm -hmm. and by Sacramento, and San Francisco, and even L.A. So now, did your your hardware store become a True Value hardware store? Yes, yes. Oh, but now did it retain its same name? Uh, or I sold it. No, it's gone. It's a glass company now. It's a, a back of Horizon Glass, mm -hmm. and uh, I sold it to another hardware merchant, Dolan, and he sold it to a glass company. They do manufacturing of glass and stuff. Now that's just north of A Street. Um, it's, it's, it's about four or five blocks north of A Street. Yeah, I've seen it there, but it's kind of close to the railroad track, sort of like, too. Yes, yes it, is, yeah. it seems like an odd place to have a glass door. The trains go yeah. by. It's <laughs> still a little shaken there. So did you have a whole, did you have lumber with your uh, no, hardware? I, no, I didn't. I sold a small amount of lumber, but it's standard two by four studs and some uh, fiberwork. Scared. Well, they got a lot of lumber around now. Yes. They got a, a, a big yard there. Let's see how this thing's doing. I hope she tied up in that damn thing. <laughs> I'll try not to. <laughs> now, did. did uh, your mother, you said your dad mostly ran the hardware store. Did yes. your mother just stay home with you kids for the most part? Yes, but before before we were very prominent in the family, I mean, she worked at, at the local drugstore down here. Mm -hmm. My sister and I got into school and she stayed home. What was the name of the drugstore? Dixon Drug. Dixon Drug. There are some of them that obviously have changed names that were on the main street, some that yeah. were there that aren't there now. There's some of them. There's Kirby's, one of them. Now, was Kirby's the drugstore? Yes. Hmm. The old Rexall drug, which became Dixon drug. Did your mom ever enter things in the fair? No, she was May Queen way back when. She used to have a queen way back when. What was her name? Lois Clark. Her parents were from Dixon. Hmm. So she was born and raised in Dixon too, yes, huh? Yes, yes. Ah, family probably knows everybody yeah. in town, huh? You used to know everybody. I mean, particularly when we had the hardware store, we used to know everybody. Mm -hmm. There's more people come in while you kind of lose touch with them. Mm -hmm. Well, Dixon's really sprawling now. It's it is. So it big. is. A lot of controversy over there sprawling between the city council and stuff. It's not as fun like it used to be. I mean, somebody's always uh, yapping at you for something's wrong, it's not right, something's wrong. You're doing something that benefits yourself. You think, you think, you think. Well, it is, I mean, just in the last few years is when I mean, all the new big developments yeah. seem to be going in and stuff that weren't here before. It was always, it seemed to me anyway, to be a little country farm in town. It was. But no matter what you do, it's going to grow on you. Oh, yeah. If nothing else, Davis is going to grow out here to meet you. <laughs> yes. Davis is a very peculiar town. Very education oriented. Mm hmm. Well, they've tried to, you know, stop growth or at least control yeah. it so much, but I think a lot of Did towns. Do you ever remember it. the Kidwell controversy we had? We had, Dixon had some ground north of Dixon. Wanted an overpass there, and Davis didn't want an overpass because it would encroach on their city limits and it'd bring more people and more problems to them. So they held up, the, they held up the uh, construction of the overpass until they needed an overpass in Davis, until they needed one there at Coal Line Road, and then they they gave in. Now, did you serve on the city council? No, I did in, not. In Did any of your family? My grandfather was mayor. 
his city council for years. Okay. What was his name again? I forgot. John. John. John L. Kilkenny. My dad was John or was he? Okay, so John L. Kilkenny was a mayor for a while? Yes. Yes. Do you know about what years that might have been? I'd say the late 30s or early 40s. And now, did your, your father didn't step into his political shoes in town? No, huh? no, he, didn't. <laughs> he retired in the county recorder's office down there, and he just, he just went to work back in his hardware store. get this going again. Oh. Were you on um, were you on any other kind of councils here in towns or boards? No, I've been with the fire department for years. Uh, volunteer fireman for years here. What was the most unusual fire that you had to go to? Probably the most unusual one was the milk farm burned up. One that's just north of the freeway? Yes, yes, yes. There's a bunch of bars out there and they all burned up. Then we used to have every fall, about a month before this time right now, you get a good north wind and the fire would start out here down and they would go clear to Rio Vista. Hmm. Just like grass fires grass or fires, fields? Yes, the pastures and all burned up. Now, the milk farm, did they have a lot of cattle and things that were no, up there at the time? No, they didn't. They didn't. They had very few. The primary was an eating place, more of an eating place mm -hmm. then than it was later on. It was a big place. And uh, they had some storage barns out in the back. In fact, I believe there was a fellow burned up in that fire. Mm -hmm. I think he was living out there. Did you guys have much problems with fires in town or around here? Not in town, so but so out in the country. Out in the country, we had a lot of fires. It gets really dry around. Yeah, we always pride ourselves on the fire department. We always felt we did a pretty good job for the community, mm -hmm. which we did. Were there any kind of unusual or interesting things offhand that you remember, like about your grandfather or any of your family coming over or being over? Uh, the one thing I remember about my granddad was, he, uh, Goss used to be, some, be the local watering hole in Dixon. He went in there one day and they were always playing jokes on each other. And he knew the bartender real well and he told the bartender he didn't have any money. He said, I'll write you out a note. I don't have any money. I will pay you a dollar and a half for a drink tomorrow. And every day my grandfather would go in there, and the bartender would say, John, how about your note? And he'd say, well, turn over and see what it says, because I'll pay you tomorrow. <laughs> he liked that. He liked that. Mm. They just read it, and I'll pay you. So you just see what it says. Now, that was the, the uh, now, was that just a bar, or was yeah, that a little a restaurant bar. like that? A little, little restaurant, restaurant bar. Mm -hmm. A lot of business was done, a lot of livestock a lot of grain was traded in here. Mm -hmm. In fact, I used to buy grain at 3 o'clock I'd bring my bid down to Dawson's and they'd all be sitting around a big table playing cards. They had a little piece of paper with your bid out on for their grain. Mm. Now, you bought and sold, sold I did, grain? I did. I bought, I bought on a commission for an outfit out of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I, I issued issue their checks for Well, the same way. So that's where everybody hung out at, huh? Right, right. You wanted to see anybody, you went in there. All the local farmers. It all, yes. <laughs> yeah, I've always had brown chihuahuas. I've never had one in Spotify. Mm -hmm. Act a little fellow. Yeah. 
Right, and nuts are good, so active. So I don't even want to catch it. You can't catch it. Now, were there very many stores and uh, things like that? Most of them are along First Street, correct? Yes, on First Street. Uh, there was a hardwood, and hard, another hardware store right in the corner. There was a clothing store and a church, church store and a restaurant. Now, was that mostly back like in the 50s and 60s that yes, you're referring yes, to? Yes, yes. Even further back than that. Hmm. Now, did any of your uncles, uh, other than Jim, kind of were they a around this in yeah, town? Yeah, Eddie and Al, they farmed. They farmed with grandfather. Their dads was my grandfather's property out between here in the winters. They farmed some of their own ground. Now, did they come in and trade in, in Dixon for yes, a lot, for the yes, most part? Yes, yes, they did. We had, a, we had a Ford car sales, we had a Chevy car sales, a GMC, and an Oldsmobile. Well, we had the full confidence one guy. But now, did they have very big families also? No, one, one of my uncles, Al, had one guy I want you to talk to, his son. Uh, he has three, three boys. In fact, at one time, he lived, the boy lived right here next door to me, and another cousin lived right down here. My son lived block over, we called it the Kilkenny Ghetto. <laughs> he had three. Seven of us live right here. Mm. Now, does very much of your family still live in this area? I have a son that lives here, and, uh, and the other one I was just talking about, he lives out on Pewter Creek. Where Jack's place is, he lives in this turf towards winters, and he lives right down Pewter Creek Road. So he just lives farther north from Jack Phillips? Actually, it's further west. Oh, further west. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice up there. It's really pretty. Yes, it is. He's got. He, he built himself a beautiful spot up there. Mm. It looks like some nice, rich soil. It is. Because the one time that thing had to overflow, that's where that soil came from. Mm -hmm. right, way back. And way back before we decided to build levees everywhere. Yes. <laughs> Keep us dry over in Sacramento. Yes. <laughs> well, Peter could still does run out into the bypass. How many children did you have? I have three. I have a boy here in Dixon, I have a boy in Bend, Oregon, and I have a daughter in Molinas, California. And I imagine you've got a, a bunch of grandkids by now, too. I've got her sister and her brother. I have three. Mm -hmm. And for my other son, who lives in Bend, Oregon, I have two girls. One thing our house is never, never very quiet. Well, you got some in here. <laughs> Since I've had my stroke, I'll you know, come home and babysit me because she can get me out of that bed and I get the chair and I'll have to put the bathroom in the and go to the bathroom and have to get something to eat. She can feed me. Mm -hmm. Now, what t when, when did you retire from uh, the hardware store? I think I retired. Now you're making tough. 1957. Ah. <laughs> Now, did you did some of your family take over when you retired, no. or? Of course, all my kids worked for me all at one time, which I did for my dad. Mm -hmm. So, did you sell the business then, or? I sold it. Yes, I when I about 1957, I sold it to Dolan, J.P. Dolan. He was a hardware merchant. He had a store in Vacaville, one in uh, Castro Valley.
Now, did any of the other family that moved out more towards uh, Vacaville, did they move back this way, or are they back yes, and they forth kind of? Yes, they did, yeah. Well, they were, the one I was talking about, the Red Barn on the old Highway 40, that's where all that industrial park is out there now. They, they used to feed sheep out there. They, they had a lot of sheep. How many generations do you remember offhand of your families here? There's there's at least that are here right now. There's at least or that have been here. I think it's been what four or five generations. Five now? generations. Yeah. It kind of was between the Royer family here in Dixon. Kind of who had the most names in the telephone book? The Royer or the Kilkenny? <laughs> We run back and forth. One had more than the other one. Now, what did they do for a living in the area? Uh, <coughs> Hans Royer was an insurance agent, and he was mayor of Dixon for a long time. And then his brother Otto Royer formed a uh, legal firm in Sacramento, down at Brand Seymour and Royer. He's still, he's still, he's still alive. He's still an attorney. I'm sure they'll go over to them because they're in for a long time. Actually, Dixon has a lot of families that have been here for quite yeah, some time. Yes. Was there any other events or things in, in Dixon that you remember that were rather out, you know, uh, kind of outstanding? Or? Outstanding and outlandish. <laughs> Very active in that. Mm -hmm. Did you guys do pheasant hunting? Yes, for pheasant, the most part? pheasant hunting, and then we always had a place to duck hunt, deer hunt, pheasant. Hunt. Were there very much deer we a few years back? Well, they're right over these hills here. We have a ranch in Lake County. That, the, that my great grandmother and grandfather bought for a son, one of their sons they had. Tuberculosis, and they thought that they'd put him up there and he'd be nice and dry out of uh, climate and he'd get over it. Well, he didn't get over it, he died up there. Mm. It can get pretty cool up there. You bet. Now, did the Phillips, uh, I don't know whether it was Jack Phillips or which one of them, but did they have like a little pheasant release area or yes, something up there? Yes, one time they had pheasant farms up there. They grew them. They grew them. Mm. Shorty, Jack's dad, or CB. CB. So they, they raised, they raised, raised Phillips and, I mean, yeah, <laughs> pheasants yeah. and released them? Yes. I don't think pheasants are native in this area. I think they are brought in. Yeah, they were. They were imported. Yeah. Like a lot of other things, like our eucalyptus. <laughs> Eucalypides. Yeah, they've done very well, though. They yeah, yeah. they survived. They they're all over the valley now, including my there. backyard. <laughs> the Aussie sold us a bill of goods on those. It's supposed to be hardwood. <laughs> yeah, they're the ones that come down in the storms, huh? Somebody's making an awful lot of noise eating all there. <laughs> now, when you went duck hunting, where did you go? Did you go up? On the bike paths, we had to build up some levees out there and fill full of water. That bypass is a natural flyway for the ducks because the water's always there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now over towards where I live, there's a lot of ducks, and now there's uh, snow geese. Yeah. And of course, the good old honkers that come through. Yeah. But it's they got something to eat now. Yeah. <laughs> now, is there very, what kind of businesses is your families in that are in this area now? Really, don't, there's none of them in any kind of a business. My other cousin I was trying to tell you about, 
used to be in banking here in Dixon, and uh, he's retired from that, and now he's consulting. And his brother is a banker in Santa Rosa. And his other brother is a developer down in San Diego. Now, Dixon has just the one bank, the Bank of America? No, it has the First Northern Bank, which is the local, local bank, which is started here in Dixon. Bank of Solano was for a long time. Mm -hmm. And which family started that bank, do you well, remember? Well, my, one of my grandfathers, J.J. Clark, was on the original board of directors, and so was my grandfather, Kilkenny. And I think they, way back when it was, they started with, they got 600 bucks for everybody, and put them in a pot, and then they started. Started the bank up? Do you know who all was on the board? I don't know all of them, but uh, J.J. Clark was my grandfather, and John Edward King was my grandfather, and there was a Tim. Yeah, because I, I think one of the ladies that they were interested in interviewing was, uh, last name was Mace. Yes. Evelyn Mace. Evelyn Mace, yes. She's, now, was her, right. her family part of the... Of that bank or, or the other bank? They were part of the Bank of America. Oh, okay. Uh, Mace is the founder of El Macero. Mm -hmm. Evelyn and, uh, Evelyn's husband and his brother were the Mace, Mace Packing Company in Slaughterhouse out here. Is that where they took a lot of the sheep and cows that they got from auction? Was no. to the Slaughterhouse? Or? Slaughterhouse, yes, yes. If they fit the criteria for being fat, they went to the slaughtering house. The Stoven brothers had one south of town here, and Mace had one north of town. We had two slaughterhouses here for years. Big employers of the people of Dixon. Do you have any idea about how many people they employed? Well, I would think that they employed each, each, each one of them probably employed around 250 to 300. That's a lot. A lot of people, yes, it, <laughs> it is. It sure is for a town this size. They're, they're the biggest employers around. I guess the population now is over 14,000. That's what I read on the side. I don't know. It's pr yeah, who knows how often they yeah. change those. Do <laughs> you want to make a statement, Candace? <laughs> Dogs are making <laughs> Now, did your children go to school here and graduate yes, she, from school she here? Yes, she went to school and graduated. And uh, both my boys and my daughter did, too. In fact, all of them did. In fact, she was, Candace was one of the first girls to go out for football. So we got in there and she went out for football. Why not? <laughs> I'm going to let you guys have all the fun. Everybody, everybody graduated from Dixon. I have a grandson now playing for UCD. Her brother. Mm hmm now, did any of them go to school in Davis, or did they go to Sacramento? No, uh, some went to Sierra Junior College, and a couple went to Oregon State Corvallis. Hmm. Well, Sierra's a little ways from here. It is, but it was, they went to Shasta Junior College. That's kind of a stepping stone to there. Mm-hmm. Now, did any of them go to... Uh, Sac State there in Sacramento? No. No. It's kind of ways to go. <laughs> it is. And, uh, when they went to Shasta, they had dorms there and they had. Uh, is there any dorms in Sac State now? Yes. Yeah. yeah, Sac State's growing like crazy. But then I think almost all the, the colleges are. Yes, yeah. Sierra yeah. College is huge yeah. now. I, I started there and it's it's just My son went there. much bigger now than what it was. The education is on an upswing, I think, again, or the population has just grown so much you're having to catch up with it. Very important in education, it is. Mm -hmm. No matter where you get it, you just got to have it. You can't even go in the Army now without graduating from high school. 
Did any of your family go into the army and serve in the army? My two uncles, Eddie and Al. Okay. Do you know which? World War II, and they were both in, the, in Burma. Now, are they back over living in this area? No, both of them are dead. Right now. Mm -hmm. In the World War II book, I was 10 years old. They wouldn't take you, huh? <laughs> I didn't want to go. <laughs> I can't say if I blame you. <laughs> I've got someplace in my memoirs, I've got drawings of all the allies and the acts. So it had to be in the, in the grade schools we were doing. Mm -hmm. Now, you, when you got married, did you marry someone from locally? From yes, I did. Dixon? I married a local gal. Her name was Marks. And they had a packing house in Woodland. And they, had, they used to have stove rooms. But they had a packing house in Woodland. Now, was her family from this area? Yes. They went there since about 1940. Now, were, were your grandparents in, in uh, Dixon back when they had, I guess, a, quite a while back, they had problems with fires in, in Dixon? Well, we had a hotel burned down that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> My grandfather, Kilkenny, was there on the fire commissioner for years. And in fact, when the hotel burned down, they had a fire truck back wheel come over, and that's when Dixon decided to buy his first fire truck. So good. <laughs> How did they treat deal with fires before that? Bucket brigade. Hmm. Where did they get the water? They packed it most of the time. Where they have a hydrant instead of putting a hose on it, they bumped it into a trough or something and they bucketed it out. Or they had a truck with a roll of truck up there with, with water in it and they bucketed it. And they had their little hand pumps used to pump. That sounds like a lot of work. It was. <laughs> now, did your father spend much time um, at the at the racetrack? Was he on any kind of board or no, anything like that no, for no, the fair? No. Somebody, I think it was Charlie McGimsey, was the chairman. He just cornered my dad and said, We want to get racing going down here. What do you see what you have to do? Hit it with the state and all that stuff. And Did you go down and watch the races when you were yes. young? Yes. Dad used to bring the jockeys around. Jockeys. Did many of the kids and stuff get to go? I mean, was it a big event, you know, weekend event or anything like that? Well, it ran during the fair. Hmm. The fair was always a week. A week long? Yes. And then, the primarily agriculture, then the besides the racing and agriculture, you had your know, sheep and your cattle and then You, was there ever very much political uh, ties and things here in, in uh, Dixon? As, as far as politics go, were people really very involved with it? Well, we had a fellow here by the name of Howard Vaughn one time. He ran for state senator. He was very politically minded. He didn't make it, obviously. Dixon was never too political. Either. It just was amongst itself here. There was A lot of the same family's been in town for quite some time, yes. or at least the early family. Yes. 
Well, notice there's a couple of old churches that look like they've been here for quite yeah, some Saint time. Yeah, St. Peter's too. and uh, the Methodist Church right down here, uh, B Street, is, they moved that facility a lot. They mm. used to be a town north of Dixon called Sylvia. Mm -hmm. They moved that church from there. Well, that's been quite a while because yes. I mean, that's back as long as, as old as Dixon is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I know the Catholic Church. Now the Catholic Church is that the one that's the brick with the two yes. turret kind two, of towers. Yeah, yes, yes. It looks like it's been here for a few days too. <laughs> yes, it has. And you ever hear the story how Dixon got its name? Somebody mm -hmm. shipped something out of Dixon, California. I mean, the D I C K S O N, but there's Dixon, Illinois, so they put so it's Dixon, California, D I X O N. <laughs> it was actually Dixon. The guy's name was Dixon. Now I guess way back then too, they also had an earthquake at one time. Yes. Uh, I guess in the late 1800s. Yeah, I don't know if Dixon got damaged as bad as the back of the winters did they. Well, one of them it damaged it pretty good because yeah. it knocked the brick buildings down. I guess the fire had been before that and burnt the wood buildings and the brick one stood. So when they rebuilt with brick. The earthquake got Locked the brick. Down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even like the Catholic Church, you can see where there's a lot of cracks where they yeah. fix the cracks. And of course, you don't usually get very many earthquakes this far across and into the valley. No. Although I was in Woodland on the last one, the, what do they call it, one in San Francisco, the Peralta or something called it. I felt it in Woodland. But it's just a little shake, and make you feel woozy in your stomach. Mm-hmm. Well, I just, I'm glad that we live <laughs> east of that fault line. I was surprised that they had one up there at Lake Tahoe. Actually, they get quite a few up into there, yeah. some pretty good ones. Are there any other buildings in town that, that you remembered as, as being rather important to the community? I said two packing houses. Now I know the cemetery has been there quite some time yes, too, it has. hasn't it? Yes, it has. Because I think Jack said he was on the, the cemetery committee or yeah, something for a while. Yeah, he was on the board while. for a long time, yeah. He was on the school board for a long time also. Mm -hmm. Now is there just the one high school here in town? Or yes, yes. I think we have Anderson and uh, got three grammar schools, I believe. Well, it's especially now, it's just really growing so much. There's yes, so many is, track yes. homes and yes. things going in everywhere. Yes. But then, you know, if they're long commutes, it's kind of a. Well, where Jack lives, are right down the road from him, the little corner there used to be the Curry Schoolhouse. Mm -hmm. I think he said he went there one time yeah. or something. That's where the school's all, all, all around now, the Oscars. Because yeah, it, it seems like he said there was an, a different school before that high school, even that there was an older one there that they tore down yes, and they built yes, that one up. Yes, there was, yes, there was. I think he said that he went to, he was the last person to graduate from it or something. That's Bob Jack's right age, yeah. Because I was in grammar school and they tore that high school one down. Then I went to the one that's built right now. I went to that one. Now your wife, she obviously went to school here in town too, right? My present wife, no, she did. My first wife did, yes. She died of breast cancer in 1973. Mm -hmm. And my first wife went to school all through the same as I did, all through the grade school and high school. And her last name was Marks, did you say? M-A-R-K-S, yeah. What was her first name? Adele. Ad Adela? Yes. And what is your wife's My name? present wife is named Barbara. She's from a big town like down in Los Angeles. She's from Santa Monica. Mm -hmm. Well, 
she's probably not used to us not shaking and rattling yeah, up here. Yeah. <laughs> that now that is yeah. real earthquake country. Yeah, it is. Now, how long have the two of you been married? Sixteen years. Racking them up, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Moving right along. Hmm. What's some of the worst weather conditions that you've never been here outside of the snow? Well, this were rain in 1955. I remember the 55 because I had a salesman call me at the store in downtown. He went home for the weekend and he was from uh, Marysville. And he went out to help prepare the levees and the rain. I don't know how many days straight it rained. And the levee broke and he was on when it broke. It doesn't sound good. That no. water's powerful. Yes. He was out helping him. We'll let go with him with it. It's scary when you see those levees going. Yes. <laughs> what hold us together? What do you think is probably the most remarkable change that you've seen in Davis? I mean Dixon. The houses. I, mean, I used to I used to hunt right here. Shoot dove and it's an open field. Mm -hmm. I know they're kinda of like mushrooms, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I've always been surprised I've looked down and it just seems like every time you drive by there's just these huge big more tracks all over alongside the freeways.